All other episodes, meanwhile, pale in comparison to Barry's series finale, which serves as the setup for the final joke. The show, titled simply and amusingly Wow, foregoes any catharsis in favor of an unexpectedly comic ending. Even on a night that featured the amazing Succession series finale, which marked the end of an era, what Hater pulled off with Barry turned out to be its own appropriate conclusion to all the build-up. The previous season of the program is still its greatest, so even though its climax wasn't always as assured as it could have been, it was still worth it for this glorious, unquestionably show-stopping finish. While the last shot of both Barry and Jean is itself a magnificent one, framed as though they are both on a stage with an audience literally clapping, it is only the beginning of the end. The final sequence of events, removed from basically all that we had come to know up until now, pushes us off the cliff into humorous waters that we have always been right on the edge of being drowned in. Barry has always been about skewering the way we extract stories from their genuine emotions to create hollow narratives, using the idea of truth as a cudgel until it shatters, and this was that on full display. Barry's series finale was the show at its best, after the film cuts away from this purposefully underwhelming climax, Sally and Barry's son John, Jeden Martell, have managed to establish a new life away from all the drama. She is now a theater director at a high school, where she produces a play that finally earns her the acclaim she has been aching for throughout the years. She continues to be as insecure as ever though, asking John if the show was genuinely any good. She agrees to go home alone when he gives her the compliment she needs, and then says he wants to go over to a friend's house that night. She is unaware that her son is actually going to watch the movie that was finally made about Barry that, to put it lightly, is wildly and hilariously inaccurate. Known as The Mask Collector, an already ridiculous title that sounds like it would be found in the bottom of a bargain bin after being sent straight to video, it sees actor Jim Cummings playing Barry and doing battle with the movie's own faux version of Jean. Playing out with the most forced dialogue, it is the precise inverse of what actually happened and is the most scintillating sequence of all. Anything and everything the series set out to do is sanded down to make a movie version that is hilariously empty. This culminates in making Barry into a martyr where, after he is depicted as having been gunned down by his malicious acting teacher, the end text informs us that he was laid to rest in the Arlington National Cemetery with full military honors. It is a ludicrous redemption that may win over unknowing audiences just looking for an empty action film, but no one who actually knew him would buy it right. When the episode cuts back to John, he begins smiling and appears on the edge of tears before the series also cuts to black. This was not the true ending of his father's story, but it is the one that he has now become impacted by. It was one sickening closer that cut to how, despite all the ways we like to put stories up on a pedestal about revealing the truth of existence, they can just as easily obscure it and offer easy answers for us to fall into. It's possible that John would not have accepted the fact that his father was a bad man who was brutally murdered just before making another vow to genuinely do the right thing. Despite all the discussion about authenticity and storytelling, which was meant to be the aim of all the vacuous characters, it was repeatedly shown to be nothing more than talk. If it meant they could gain a moment in the spotlight, they would all sell the idea of truth itself. Gene, who came back from hiding to supposedly speak up against a movie that he felt would misrepresent the story, rolled over as soon as he felt his image could benefit. Barry, who continually lied to himself and others in everything he did, ended up constructing an existence that was literally all a fake performance in the vein of Synecdoche, New York, though with all the life stripped from it. Sally, long the one we hoped would find some sort of salvation and truth, had only gained what she had after lying on stage to widespread acclaim. No matter how many times they said they as storytellers were trying to pursue some sort of transcendent or existential truth, they were all just hucksters looking to boost their own egos. It would be tragic if it weren't simultaneously hilarious to see this all unfold. All of them were hypocrites, and the show was about the journey to finally stripping away the vacuous pretenses they put forth to get to a more hauntingly humorous truth. This brings us full round to John and the last tale snippets. The result of everything Barry had been tinkering with is that he transitions from initially seeming to be bored by the movie with all its many prepared lines and much more strained interpretations of what actually happened to being moved by it. 
We got closer to the sad reality of how lying will outlast everything with each lie that was spoken, whether it was on the different stages or off them in the cruel hellscape that was its Los Angeles. Although this movie is the most dishonest and fraudulent thing we've seen so far, it now seems more authentic than Barry himself. He got his legacy despite never earning it. All one can do is laugh at the final realization that, no matter how much chaos the show faced, Hayter really did it. By uncovering a clarity as cutting as it was comedic, he made a forgettable action movie the most frightening and funny finale to end on.